Okay, welcome, Jacob. Hopefully, we'll get a couple more. Um, so let me tell you the plan. The plan is I'm going to start out by talking about Chapter 10. Chapter 10 is mostly a repeat of Chapter 9, except um, with a few new calculator functions. But all the ideas are the same. There's very little to talk about in terms of um, theory. It's all, okay, now we're going to have two samples instead of one sample. So there's, I don't have to spend an entire hour talking about it. I do have some examples to give you though. Um, and it turns out that chapter 10 is the most important in terms of hypothesis testing. It comes up all the time because most studies are comparison studies. That's what you usually do. So chapter 10 is important because it's all about comparison studies. Then after that, I want to spend probably about 15 minutes talking about the project. A little less time talking talk about this one than the first project because now you're, you are experienced working on a project. So Jacob, do you have any questions before I um, get moving? I'm all right. Okay, so let me, um, let me move along. And so as I mentioned, chapter 10 is about hypothesis testing for two things. So there's going to be, there's really going to be three different types. One is comparing two proportions. So that's when you're going to survey two different groups and see which one has a higher proportion. Or maybe you're going to survey something this year and survey next year and see if things have changed when it was a yes, no question. The other type, the next type, is when you have um, a group of people and it doesn't have to be people, it could be dogs or something like that, but the, I just use people because it's easy to kind of identify with, um, at which you're asking two quantitative survey questions. So you might want to compare, for example, um, how many hours a week people sleep and how many hours a week people work. And you might think that people work more than they sleep. So the idea is everybody's asked two questions and you're able to compare their answers. You can subtract, say, the hours that they sleep minus the hours that they work and get something and get a difference. And then the third type is when you have a quantitative survey question. Now it's one question instead of two, but you have two populations. So that might be something like um, maybe who takes longer to graduate from college, men or women? So maybe you think there isn't a difference between the two of them. Maybe you think there might be. So then you would have, you'd ask a bunch of men and ask a bunch of men, women, or you'd observe them and see how, how many years it took them to finish college. And then we're able to find out, do we have evidence to say that there's a difference between men and women in how long they finish from college? So notice that's different than asking the same person two questions, because you have two groups and each group is getting the same question. So any questions, at least on the idea, before I go into examples? I'm good. <laughs> okay. So the good news, the good news is that um, it's really no different than what we've done, except the calculator button. And there's a little more writing to do sometimes. So let me go and do it by example, because that's really the best way of doing this. So I'm going to share. Actually, let's do this. Let me share the desktop. Uh, share screen. Paint. Okay, so here's, here's the question I have. Are left-handed people better mathematicians than right-handed people? So Jacob, are you lefty or righty? Uh, left-handed. All right, me too, by the way. <laughs> okay, do you know how many people are lefties, by the way? What percent? I can't think of it right now. <laughs> Not 12%. Yeah. Although, you know, it's really hard to find the exact number um, when it should be obvious, but I'll see 10%, I'll see 12% when I look it up. Yeah. So, are you good at math? Uh, I guess. <laughs> Depends on the, what you're talking about. All right, like so here's what we did. Okay, of course, this is all hypothetical. 35 randomly selected lefties and 40 randomly selected righties took a math test. The lefties scored an average of 
with a standard deviation of 13%. The righties scored an average of 68% and had that same standard deviation of 13%. Okay, and we're gonna do the hypothesis test basically. Yeah. So, so do you understand um, why you might be interested in looking at two populations and saying, is there a difference between the two? Is one better? Yeah, I see it. Uh, it's been, it looks like sense or it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, so this is an example. Instead of men and women, it's lefties and righties. Um, there's lots and lots and lots of examples where you're comparing. Yes. Okay. Uh, and what's your field again, Jacob? Uh, business admin. Okay, so business admin, you might compare. I actually very, know very little about business admin. I know business a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so you might compare, for example, um, do the passive administrators do better than the more um, uh, micromanagement administrators? Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And you could look at, let's say, you're you're working for a very large corporation that has maybe you know tens of, you know, hundreds and hundreds of stores throughout the country, and you can look and you can see what are the profits where you have a head manager who is passive versus a head manager that's active. Yeah. See that? And that'd be another hypothesis test for the difference between two means. Does that totally make sense? Yeah, just comparing them. <laughs> yeah, it's really easy to come up with examples in any field. So that's what I want to emphasize, how important this is. Okay, this is one example. So it's one thing I think of a business admin. I don't know if that's really business admin. You might know better than I do. Oh, you do <laughs> better. Because I don't know business admin, I know math. <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay, so here's what we do. We want to find the test statistic and the p-value. Before we do that, we need to actually write down the null and alternative hypotheses. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, so let's do that. So the null hypothesis, you're used to this, I hope, by now, because you did chapter nine. Did you yeah. understand chapter nine, by the way? What's up? Did you understand chapter nine? Yeah, I, I, um, I wanted the tutor, you know, and then you know, he helped me. Uh, I think his name's Caesar, and uh, mm -hmm. he, Nice guy, and he helped us out. And then I watched your videos. Oh, great, great. No. If you understand chapter nine, chapter 10 should be a piece of cake. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, if you didn't understand it, then it'll be just as hard. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so H naught. So the difference is before we would have, um, first thing, notice this is a quantitative survey question. What did you score on your test? You know, I scored 83%. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's not a yes, no question. So when you have not a yes, no question, then the variable of interest is mu. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay, so then we're gonna have mu for lefties. So I'm gonna use L for lefty. And notice it says, are they better mathematicians? So better mathematicians mean they scored higher. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, not greater than yet. Let me do this. That'll be H1. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and this should be not an equal. Sorry about that. This should be a colon. So some of the signs change now. It's not equal to. <laughs> yeah, so the equal's coming in a minute. Okay, colons are hard to draw. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so we have mu sub L, and then we're going to have equal, and then mu sub R. So the mean lefty test score is the same as the mean righty test score. Because if we're wrong, that there isn't any difference between lefties and righties, and that's what it ought to be. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay, and then we're gonna have H1. And we're gonna have mu L. And what's the inequality this time? It'd be greater than, right? Exactly. Greater than mu sub r. <clears throat> Does that make total sense? Yeah. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to go to a calculator. So let me, um, I have to go back to the share thing. And that's over here, new share, calculator. Okay, so I'm in my calculator. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to stat and I'm gonna to test. So now what we're gonna do is we are gonna to go to the two-samp t-test. 
Okay. Hopefully you understand now each of those components. Why do you think two this time? Because there's two different groups. <laughs> yeah, we got two different groups. So the, the people in Texas actually did a really nice job. Don't you agree? Yeah. <laughs> For most of the things. Okay. Sam because there's two samples and it's a t-test. Because simple. we have quantitative data and we don't know the, the population standard deviation, which you never will, by the way. So hit enter. Okay. Do I have data or do I have stats? Stats. I have stats. And we were told that X1 bar, which is the uh, um, mean for the lefties, was 0.72 or 72. I'll just do it in percentages, it makes it a little easier. SX1 was 13, because the standard deviation was 13%. There were 35 lefties. X2 bar was 68%, so I'm going to go 68. SX2 was 13 again. And N2 was 40. And then we had our alternative hypothesis had a greater than sign. Yeah. So what I recommend is for this class, just say no to pooled. All right. Okay, um, you rarely can actually pull it, and I'll, I'll, I'll just call that advanced statistics, so don't worry about it. Sound good? <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Make life easy for you. Just say no to pooled. Thank you. <laughs> okay, think about this. Um, I, I remember, are you in Tahoe? You're not in Tahoe. Are you in yeah, Tahoe? I'm in Tahoe. Okay, so would you like to jump in an outdoor pool today? No. <laughs> no, you just say no. Got it? <laughs> it was like 17 degrees this morning. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I took a jog because I wanted to be outside, but I didn't want to be cold. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I go calculate. Okay. So it gives us everything we need. Are you feeling like there's nothing really new here? I was going to say that it's, it's all the same. Exactly. I mean, now we have mu L and mu R instead of mu L and number. But yeah. other than that, it's the same. It's two SAMP t test instead of t test. But yeah, it's the same. Okay. So the main thing is the test statistic, because I asked for the test statistic, is t equals 1.3 um, about. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think the computer will say three decimals, so 1.329. Yeah. The p-value is 0 0.09 about. That's all you need to know. Perfect. Okay. So um, you might want to write down the p-value is 0 0.09, because we're going to use that for the next step. So now let's go and go back to paint so I can start typing. Okay, so we just did, we found the test statistic, we found the p-value, we're using alpha is 0.05. Our p-value was 0 0.09, so what's the conclusion? Sorry, I'm getting a scratch paper real quick. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so the p-value, maybe I'll write that down so you can see it. So the p-value was 0 0.09. Okay, so when the alpha is 0 0.05 and p is 0 0.09, how do you state the conclusion? So, let, me get, let me get readdressed. I, I have to find some dash here real quick. So, um, so let's see. I'll start you out there. <laughs> um, yes. So what were you asking? What was the question again? What's the conclusion? Um, so there is, um, so since like the p value is greater than um, alpha, mm -hmm. you um, pretty much say that um, it's, is it, they don't have, or they do have sufficient evidence, right? Or uh, one more guess. <laughs> they, they don't, they don't yeah. have. Yeah. You're a rusty right now. <laughs> you don't want big P's. Yeah. <laughs> you should be little on that plate, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can remember it. Okay. So there is statistically insignificant evidence. That's what it is, yeah. They doing the test, I think I like froze up on it, you know, with the test. I'm like, oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> but I, I, I had the flashcard, so hopefully I got it right. <laughs> okay, hopefully that helped. So there's statistically insignificant evidence to conclude that the population mean, you need, need to have those words. Yeah. Test score. 
for lefties is greater than the population mean test score for righties. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. And there's other ways of saying it, but population mean is necessary and statistically insignificant is that is necessary. It's a fancy way of saying we know nothing. I don't know if you realize that. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Because really it just says we don't know anything. <laughs> we yeah. did the study and we got nothing that we could use. That's all this is. Okay, the p value. So the p value says that if the lefties and righties have the same population mean test score. I'll call it math test score because that's what we're looking at. And if we surveyed or we tested another uh, 35 lefties and 40 righties. And I'm going to do the following. Um, then there would be a, and let me do this. I'm going to copy this. I'm not sure if this works on paint. We'll find out. Be a, and the p value was 0.09. So 9% chance. Uh, um, that the lefties would score at least three percent or four percent, sorry, higher than the righties. How'd I get four percent? Did you subtract the p value from the alpha? That oh, that's a good guess. Actually, it's just a coincidence. <laughs> that's a total coincidence. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> but else gives you 4%. Ah, let's see how these work. If you look at all the numbers, you'll find it, hopefully. Oh, it's from the, the righty scored an average of 68, and then the lefty scored an average of 72, right? Yeah, the lefties did 4% more. Do you see? Yeah, that makes sense. So it's the probability that if the lefties and righties are the same, that we would get what we got or more. Does that make sense? Yeah. A 4% difference. Okay. And then the next one, aha, it did work. I copied and pasted. So yeah. notice it starts the same. If the lefties and righties have the same population mean math test score, and if we test another 35 lefties and 40 righties, then there would be a 5% chance. So now it's the level of significance. 5% chance that we would end up Concluding that the population mean test score for lefties is higher than righties. So notice that's a bad thing because if they were the same, we shouldn't be, we don't want to end up concluding that ones, that lefties are higher. Do you see that? Yeah. Because that was just wrong. That we, we blew it. So it says that if the lefties and righties are the same, we got a 5% chance of blowing it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty much hypothesis tests when you have looking for a difference between two different population means. Any questions on that? I think I'm all right. <laughs> yeah. Does it look real similar to chapter nine? Oh, for sure. Identical almost. <laughs> Just two, yeah. two yeah. different um, groups. So. That's the only difference. That's a new thing. Okay, so let's get to the next type because that was means. Let's do proportions. All right. So I need to erase all this stuff. A lot of writing. 
Yeah, uh, I noticed that during the you know the test, it's just a lot of writing. I, I was trying to you know since we on the homework or the quizzes for last week, I was trying to just write it down, um, you know, on the scratch paper and get used to doing it for the midterm. That's a good idea. Yeah, writing as much. Um, to me, what I think is that the best practice is your um, discussion posts. Yeah, yeah. Because that's where you have to do the writing. Oh, for and sure. Same yeah. kind of writing. So that's the best practice for that kind of writing. Okay, so let's look at the next example. So is the success rate for statistics students who enroll in the Monday, Wednesday, Friday class section different than the success rate for the statistics students in the role in the Tuesday, Thursday section? Interesting little side things, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, 120 of the 180 randomly selected students who enrolled in Monday, Wednesday, Friday passed. While 215 of the 497 who enrolled in the Tuesday, Thursday section passed. <laughs> okay, so the question is, let's do the hypothesis test. Sound good? Yep. Okay, so the first thing, what's the difference in this one and the last one? It's a um, proportion, or they selected a certain amount of students out of the whole group. I like the I like your first couple words even better. What'd you say? Yeah. It's a proportion. Proportion. That's the big difference. Yeah. Is it's a proportion. The survey question is, did you pass your statistics class? You see that? Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes, I passed. Whereas the other survey question was, what did you score on the test? Oh yeah. The answer would be I scored an 83. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So it's all about the survey question. Is it a yes, no question, or is it a number question? Does that make sense? Yeah. You're going to want to do that for the rest of this class, by the way. So we have H naught. Because of that, we're doing proportions. What letter do we use for proportions? Uh, P. Yeah, so P. I'm going to write W uh, M W F for Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Is equal to... P T T for Tuesday, Thursday. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay, then we're gonna have H1, and that's P, and then MWF. And what inequality this time? Would it be well, uh, not equal to? Good. So I have to write equal and I'll make it not with the pen. Not equal to P T T. The pen takes a long time, so if I can yeah. write it. That's better. I, I'm much faster typing than penning. Okay. Any questions on that? Makes sense. Okay. Again, this isn't much different than what you've already done. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> okay. Good, good. All right. So now we need to do the test statistic and the p-value. So obviously, we need the calculator, right? Yep. By the way, um, when I first taught this class, we didn't use calculators. Oh. It was a brutal class. So you have to do it all by hand or? All by hand, all by formulas. And there were like wow. a zillion equations. <laughs> and that's because I'm old. So it was a long time ago before there were good calculators out. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been teaching for 25 years or so. So when I first, just the very beginning. That's a, that, that'd be a hard class. That'd be a lot harder. <laughs> it was brutal. And when I took it, it was all theory. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was 100%. It was a math class. It wasn't a statistic. It wasn't in the standard GE stuff. It was, it was for like senior level math majors. Yeah. So that's different. They still have that, but you're not taking that one. Yeah, no. <laughs> so we get to use our calculator. That's the good news. So that was kind of the moral of that is be happy that you have a calculator. I love it. I, I replaced all my batteries for a test. <laughs> that was smart. That was smart. That's what you say in your, that's when it would happen for sure. <laughs> you know, the funny, that, not funny thing. The sad thing is that in my calculus class, I had a student run out of batteries. Oh, <laughs> that sucked. And nobody had spare batteries for him, so it was awful. That's yeah. terrible. I didn't have them. I didn't know what to do, but I just told him to do your best. Yeah, I I use this calculator a lot too. Just with um, I'm in, I'm in uh, John Kingsbury's accounting also. Uh huh. I'm, I'm doing a lot of you know for the homework. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go stat. I bet you're gonna be able to guess. The two prop Z test, maybe. Yep. <laughs> 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 it's, 
it just kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, just two. two. And <laughs> yep. Now it's two samples because we got the Monday, Wednesday, Friday group and the Tuesday, Thursday group. So that's two yeah. samples. It's prop because it's a yes, no question. Z because the sample sizes are big enough. By the way, you need to have all, everything bigger than five in this case. All right. Okay, so we did, if you look at this, um, because we had the number of yeses were 120 and 215, plenty bigger than five. Do you see that? Yeah, yeah. The number of no's were 60 and uh, 282. Also much bigger than five. If you don't have bigger than five, you can't do it. All right. Okay. All right, so now you just plug in what was given. Okay. So 120 was X1, and 180 was N1. X2 was 215, and N2 was 497. And not equal. And question? Oh, I was just, I was just <laughs> talking to myself, not equal to. Exactly, not equal to. Just a, just a suggestion, if you think I haven't given you enough information to be able to put in your calculator, that usually means you're using the wrong test. Yeah. Okay, that's a, that's a good indication that you're just, you went to the wrong button on the calculator. Yeah. It doesn't mean I didn't give you enough information. Just okay. wrong test. <laughs> yeah, I've done all these problems, you know what I mean? I made sure they're doable. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know what this color thing is. I don't care about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't have that on mine. <laughs> yeah, the newer calculator, I guess, has it. I think that's if you want to graph, which we don't need to do. So I'm going to go to calculate. Same idea. Okay, so the test statistic is 5.38. So is the p-value 7.39, um, et cetera? Is it? Yeah. Hold on. Oh, no. Okay, definitely not. Don't forget the p-value is a probability, right? Yeah, the probability is a... It can't be 7.39. So what's up? Would it... I'm kind of confused about this one. Would it be... There's like four different p's or five. No, no, no. It's that, it's that second one where it says p equals seven point, etc. Yeah. I read it though. That's the question. I purposely gave this one so that you, I can show you how you read these. Oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> you yeah. just moved the decimal place eight times to the left, right? Good. So pay attention to that E. It happens yeah. a lot. And in fact, in the real world, most of the time it happens. Yeah. Most of the time you have a hypothesis and you're right. So then the truth is going to show and your p-value is going to be small. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that tells you it's 0.00000739. That makes total sense? Yep. Okay, so now I can um, go back to paint and start typing. Okay, so notice the P was very, very, very tiny. So what's the conclusion? That, um, I need to get my notes. I'm like, I was in class all day, so I'm, I'm out of it. Hold on. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, a, it's really important to know that p-value is really, really small, smaller than alpha, but much smaller than alpha. There is, at the start. Um, let's see. There is uh, sufficient evidence? Yes, uh, sufficient. I like to say strong statistically significant when you have such a small p-value. All right. You want to, like, brag. <laughs> yeah, you're like, brag and use that. There's a not that big of a probability at all. <laughs> statistically significant evidence to conclude that um, the population proportion, or even better, uh, yeah, the population proportion of, uh, I'm going to write M. MWF for Monday, Wednesday, Friday students who pass is larger. I'm oh, sorry, is not the same as the population uh, 
proportion of Tuesday, Thursday. Students who pass. Any questions on that? Makes sense. I've seen it practice uh, the interpreting, you know, just write them out. Yeah, notice the words population proportion. That's important. Mm -hmm. Okay, here I just asked you for the p value. Yeah. We'll do that. And it, you always start with kind of restating H not in words. So if the population proportion um, of Monday, Wednesday, Friday, students who pass is the same because H not has an equal mm -hmm. as the population. proportion of Tuesday, Thursday, students who pass. And if we, uh, sur we uh, surveyed another, and now we're looking at uh, 180, Monday, Wednesday, Friday students. And 497, Tuesday, Thursday, students. Then there would be a, I'm gonna write almost no chance. Yeah, barely. <laughs> because we had a p-value that had seven zeros in front of the number. <laughs> okay, so that's almost no chance is a nice way of saying it here. Yeah. That the um, difference in pass rates for these samples would be at least and now what you do in your calculator, it gave you P1 hat and P2 hat. Yeah. So P1 hat was about 67%. P2 hat was about 43%. Mm -hmm. So if you subtract, you get um, 24%. Does that make sense? Yeah, just a little, little new right there with the P. Uh, P hat and P, you know, the P. -tier. Yeah, you see which was bigger and, and then how much bigger. And it was 24% bigger. All right. And that's all you have to do there. Oh. I make it sound easy, don't I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's a lot harder, but. It's just a, hard, a lot harder by yourself, you know, when you're not yeah. really, you're, you know, you see it and do it, but, you know. Yeah, watching is a lot different than doing with math. Exactly. <laughs> I like to think of math and kickboxing have a lot in common. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever have you ever uh, kickboxed? Not really. Kind of messed uh, around, but <laughs> I have kickboxed and it hurts a lot more than watching someone else kickbox. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So trust me. When I was younger I did a lot of martial arts. Okay. My cousin uh, on the North Shore of Hawaii does like he has his own gym and he does all that stuff. Yeah, I taught um, I taught some karate. So that's but, awesome. Um, time ago. Okay, so let's do another example. Again, there's no theory to talk about. This is just all, I think it's hopefully you agree that it's all makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, it makes sense for sure. But it's about just seeing um, examples. Mm -hmm. So next example, I think I have two more, and then we'll do the project. So let's go and. A lot of people probably didn't get your email or something about the webinar tonight. <laughs> yeah, um, it's also you know posted on Canvas. Oh yeah, yeah. You go to the module eight, uh, module week eight, you'll see it. Yeah. Um, and I think, and it, I wasn't sure to even have it today because I know people are taking the test tomorrow. Oh yeah, it's a pure for studying. Yeah, which is why I'm also having it. Why I didn't have it Monday, Tuesday because. That didn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Next week, I think I have to have it Tuesday, Wednesday again, because I'm going to be out of town Monday. For uh, conference. So I can't do it Monday. So I think it's going to have to be Tuesday, Wednesday. 
All right, that works for me. Yeah. But, um, so let's um, go ahead and do another example. Uh, let's do, actually, let's do this one. I have one more to do. Okay, so here's the next one. So are people better listeners if they do not have use of their eyes? You ever heard that before? Yeah, I've heard of it. Okay, so here's what, here's what we did. Okay, and by the way, I want to you know, let you know this is all made up, but studies could be done. Yeah. This kind of study. Okay, so 12 volunteers were first given 100 words to remember while they were looking at the person speaking. Then they were given 100 words blindfolded. Got it? Mm -hmm. Each time the participants were asked to write down as many of the words as they could remember. The table be show, below shows the outcome of this study. And for some reason it did some weird things on copying and pasting the table. <laughs> so sorry about the formatting there. No problem. Okay. Find the test statistic and the p-value. Basically do all the hypothesis testing. So how is this different than the other two we did? Uh, there's actual data given or uh yeah data right okay so one thing is just data okay what about the yes no versus quantitative which is this this is um quantitative right because right yeah they're the table it's numbers yeah. right <laughs> so it's definitely quantitative but how is this different besides the fact that data given from the other quantitative two sample example um the first example i gave today there's a pretty much one group of 12 volunteers, and then um, it's uh, guess just like uh, it's kind of hard to say. Okay, so in the first example, it was if you remember two groups, and each of them did something, and we compared each of the, those two groups. Yeah. And first person of the first group had nothing to do with the first person of the second group. Yeah. Okay. On the other hand, this isn't two groups. This is one group. Yeah. This is one group doing two, div two different things, right? Answering two different questions, basically. Mm -hmm. So this is different, very different. So here what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called a paired sample test. Sometimes it's also called a dependent t-sample or t-test. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so the null and alternative hypotheses are gonna look really different on this one because here there's really only one variable and the variable is the difference. Mm -hmm. We could look at, we could look at um, looking minus blind. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So let's take a look and I'm gonna write this one out because we're gonna have a mu in it so it means I gotta use a pencil. So I'm going to have H naught. And now when we have this two sample, and when we have the um, dependent test, H naught and H1 are basically pretty much always going to be the same. And it's mu sub D. Do you know what D might stand for? Um, no. <laughs> D stands for difference. Right. Oh. So it's the mean difference. And we want to see, we want to see mean difference, mean difference in row. row. And H1. H1. I'm getting the echo thing from you. Oh, really? Oh. Uh, try unmuting my mic real quick. Which I don't care, but it's getting put on YouTube, so it's better not to have it echoed. So H1 is mu D. So we're going to let D, by the way, I'm going to write this out. D is going to be equal to the looking minus blind. Okay. All right. Standard in the calculator. It'll make it easier in the calculator if we do it that way. Okay, so now we gotta think about it for a bit. We wanna find out if they're better when they're blind. 
They're better when they're blind. Is looking minus blind going to be positive or negative? Didn't want equal. I want, uh, is looking minus blind going to be positive or is it going to be negative? If they're better when they're blind. Looks about positive, probably. Right. Okay. So let's take a look at these first guys. See the 14 and 17. Is blind better? Yeah. Okay. Looking minus blind, is that positive or negative? Positive. <laughs> What's 14 minus 17? Oh, that's negative. Sorry. Okay. Negative. Negative. Yeah, the other one. <laughs> it's really easy to get confused because it seems like better ought to be positive. But you really got to look at this D, looking minus blind, and pick an example. Do the subtraction and see if it's positive or negative. Yeah. Is that clear? Yeah, it's clear. Okay. So once we have that, then we're going to go ahead and use our calculator. This one's going to be very different than the others. Okay, so what we're going to do now is let's clear it out. We're going to go to stat, we're going to go to edit, let's erase L1, so clear L1, and let's erase L2. And for L1, I'm going to do the lookings, which was 14, whoops, 14, and then 23, and then 15, and 37. Hopefully you're okay just putting in down, are you? Yeah. <laughs> 19, 22, 51, 37, 18, 16, and 22. For L2, it was 17, 25, 20, 37, 3, and 29, 24, 53, 35, 20, 19, and 22. Any questions on that? Makes sense. Okay. So now we're going to do something that you haven't done before. I'm actually going to quit. I'm going to go second, quit. And then I'm going to go second, one. And then minus second two, so L1 minus L2, because we're looking at the differences, right? Yeah. Looking minus blind. And then we're going to hit that stow button. What that's going to do is we're going to send it into L3, second three, and hit enter. And what that did is it just created a new column of differences. Hmm. And now we can think of this as only one sample. You see that? I see now. That's cool. Because we have a sample of differences. So now I can go back to stat. You can go to tests. And it's just one sample. So which one am I going to use? Uh, this, was it the t-test? t-test. So I'm going to enter on t-test. We have data. And mu naught was zero because that was in H naught, right? Mm -hmm. The list now is L3. Oh. Do you see that? Because we stored it into L3. So second three will give you L3. Three is always one. And then our H, our H1 was that it's less than zero. So I go to less than, and then go to calculate. So I'm going to pause for a second. Do you, um, any questions on the calculator work? Yeah, I just got to keep, you know, re repeating that first step, the sending it all in a L3. <laughs> yeah, L1 minus L2 is stone. Yeah, that's the new part. That's, that's pretty cool. Part. Okay. And then I hit enter. Okay. And notice that our p value is 0 0.01. Our test statistic is negative 2.4. Or 0.02 is a p-value, I guess. Any questions on that? I'm all solid on that. Okay. So then let's just finish it off, which should be really simple, I hope, for you. Yeah. Because it's the same thing that we've been doing. So let's state the conclusion. 
And we can say, let's go to letters. There is. Is it statistically significant or statistically insignificant? It's um, significant. Yeah, because the p-value is 0 0.02. evidence to conclude that, and now we're gonna say we're concluding. Well, we just restate H1, and that was that the population mean, remember always population mean, or proportion if it's proportion, um, number of words that people can remember um, while blindfolded is larger than the population mean a number of words that people can remember uh, when with the, when they have the use of the eyes. Any questions on that? Yeah, I, I think I'm all good. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna skip the interpret the p-value just for time reasons because it's the same as all the rest of them. Are you yeah. okay with that? Yeah. It's the same idea. Okay, um, because I wanna talk about the project. And you said you have your partners, which is good, because that's step one, by the way. So for all you watching on YouTube, if you don't have a, pro, a, part, pro, a partner yet, worry a lot, it's time to get it. People are um, posting on the discussion, the project discussion board and asking for partners. So make sure you all get a partner. That's really important. You can't do this alone. All right, so now I'm gonna go uh, new share. And let's do that one. Okay, so here is the uh, canvas. And there's a few ways of getting there. I like to get there through the syllabus. There's a lot of ways of finding it. So if you go to syllabus and you go to project two, notice it's due November 26th. And the warning is that November 26th is Sunday of Thanksgiving weekend. So it does not mean that you have to turn it in Sunday of Thanksgiving weekend. You could turn it in next week if you want it. After, when, you're, when you understand chapter 10, you're completely ready. So that's why today seemed to be the right day. Do you agree, Jacob? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to make sure everyone had a chance to start early, if, uh, who, those who want to, because I don't want to ruin your Thanksgiving. All right, so let's go through this. Okay, so the purpose of Project 2 is to use confidence intervals and hypothesis testing to support or show lack of support for a research project. So the first thing I want to let you know is that most of your writing should be about the confidence interval and the hypothesis test. Okay? All the rest is just fluff, basically. So if, if you don't have most of your writing on those two things, you should worry a lot. Okay, decide what you're interested in researching and then design your study and collect your data. Next, analyze your data and see what it tells you whether it supports your hypothesis. So the first thing I recommend doing is come up with a hypothesis. So your hypothesis might be, for example, um, People, um, let's say you're a waiter at a restaurant. Okay, I don't know what you do for a living, Jacob, but, but let's say you're a waiter for a restaurant and you might want to find out, you think that maybe tips are better for dinner than they are for lunch. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you know, the tip percent. So then your H naught would be the um, mu for dinner is greater than mu's for lunch. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're, this is a, basically is chapter 10. And the reason I'm doing chapter 10, chapter 10 basically brings together everything we've done, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's not like it's only chapter 10, but chapter 10, if you don't understand chapter nine, you can't do chapter 10, right? If you don't understand chapter eight, you can't do chapter 10. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so that's the first thing is come up with a hypothesis. 
If it's not interesting, it's not okay. I recommend having like a client like you had last time. It makes the writing easier. So identify someone who might be interested. If nobody's interested, it's not an okay project. Because I don't want uninteresting projects. Sound fair? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is different. This notice this does not have to be a survey. This could be a data collection study that has nothing to do with surveying people. So for example, um, you could do, say, um, the big thing in, uh, in our area, and you know you're from here, what's the big thing that people study here? Uh, like forestry and stuff or? Yeah, and in particular? Um. <laughs> Very specific. As soon as I say it, you'll say, of course. Yeah, probably. I, I just... You're not sure? Well, the lake, the, um, <laughs> oh no. Lake Clarity. Lake Clarity, yep. <laughs> Isn't that number one in Tahoe? Yeah. Yeah, Lake oh. Clarity. <laughs> and there's a lot of data on Lake Clarity. So you can, you can go grab data. That's fine. Does that make sense? Yeah, that'd be, that's cool. So if, if it's interesting to you, then go ahead and do it. It doesn't have to be a survey. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's, that's really cool. Data collection. Okay. All right. Also, um, what it, here's what you're not allowed to do. If you can get the population mean, then it's not okay. All right. Because you don't do a hypothesis test if you can get the population mean. Okay. And I mean get it without too much horrible effort. So, for example, it's not okay to, to do like, um, um, do the Cubs score more runs than the Dodgers in the season this year? For, the, for their games. Because it's really easy. You played 162 games and you can get those 162. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you can get the population mean. So if you can get the population mean, don't, you're not allowed to do it. Okay, if you can easily get it. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. But if you're doing lake clarity, the, there's no way you can get the clarity of the lake for every moment in time, say for the 2017. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. So that'd be one you could do. Okay, you can't. You're allowed to do a survey if there, you know, if there's a big population, like all students in the college or something like that. But you don't have to. You can do something that's interesting that's not um, survey of people. All right. Like business. It could be say um, profits over, you know, over a couple years. Does that make sense? Yeah. You could look at say 30, 30 business to business profits and look at their annual reports. I'm trying to do your, your subject. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And you could look at the annual reports of 30 different big businesses and look at their profits, I don't know, this year versus last year. And that would be fine as a study. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, it needs to be quantitative. The main reason for that is that if for the, um, the yes, no question, you would need to get over 1,000 for your sample size. And this is too hard. <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do that to you. So, so make it quantitative so all you need is over 30 of each. So if you're comparing two populations, then you'll need a minimum of 62, right? Because mm -hmm. 31 times 2 is 62. If you're doing one population with two survey questions, then you're going to then you're gonna have um, 31. Okay? You could have more, but you don't have to. You don't get extra credit for having 500. 31 is just fine. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, unlike this is not project one. So don't try to make this project one. So I don't care about your sampling technique. All I care is that you tell me what it is. So if you do convenience sampling, that's fine. Just be honest. Say you did convenience sampling. There's probably bias. And that's just the way it goes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I will not take off points if you do convenience sampling as long as you admit to it. Is that fair? Yeah. And again, it should be a very quick little talk about your sampling. Okay, the main, remember the two main things you're supposed to do? Uh, conference interval and how about this? Right. So that's the, that's the main point. Keep that as your focus. All right. All right. So again, this has to be chapter 10. So you must do a comparison study, either independent or dependent variables. And that's what we just went over the, the, this hour, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, quantitative and subtractable. So if you're going to do a 
Um, if you can do two survey questions on 31 people type of thing, okay, or you know data values, you can't do height and weight because it doesn't make any sense to say people's height is more than people's weight. Is that clear? Yeah. Right. Do you weigh more than you are tall? Yeah. <laughs> doesn't. Do you see? It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. So if you're gonna do if you're gonna do a survey, make sure that you can subtract. All right. Okay? So for example, you could do um, you know time sleeping versus time. Um, working because that's very subtractable okay you could also do scale of one to ten on both of them and that's subtractable does that make sense mm -hmm. okay and that makes it quantitative okay so just a note and i think i want to show you this now i think you can see it you should be able to see the new tab yep okay good let me go to the spreadsheet you must use a spreadsheet because you're gonna be doing this um, you know, data collection, and that could be a survey or it could just be finding data, that's fine. And in the spreadsheet, unlike project one, project one you use this, right? Do you remember that? Yeah. Project two, you use two bear stats. So if you click on the two bear stats tab, it gives you this. And you can see that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I typed in first and second, you're gonna make a copy. If you, and by the way, if you already made a project, one copy, you don't have to make another copy, you just use that one. Okay, um, so you're gonna change that first and second to whatever you're doing, right? Could be lunch versus dinner. Could be men versus women or something like that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I call it first and second just so that you can see what's going on. Don't do a sample size of three. This is just so you know where to put numbers in. Is that clear? Yeah. And what I tried to do when I wrote the spreadsheet program, is I tried to make it as easy as possible. So the one thing you are going to have to do is move your eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you have to move your eyeballs to the right place. <clears throat> so notice that there is dependent, uh, there's a, sorry, independent difference and there is dependent difference. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So it gives you both of them. The computer doesn't know which you're doing, but you need to know which one you're doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And again, what I recommend doing before you even collect data is run by, uh, pop in your, um, your idea in the project discussion forum, and then I'll let you know if it'll work. Same thing with project one, right? All right. Sounds good. So post a discussion forum, and hopefully you figured out. I look often. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll I'll be on it. Like I said, it you know within hours, sometimes minutes, not days. Okay. I, I tend to I don't want to let things go for days, so I just look at it, do it, and I figure everyone's happy if I do that. So I will get back to you quickly. Okay. And just write down what you're thinking, and I'll tell you if it's going to work. Most of the time I'll say, this will almost work. Here's a couple little adjustments to make and you're good to go. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And same as last time, you're not allowed to ask um, children. If they're college students who have any children, that's okay. But don't ask children. You know why, right? Because it won't, <laughs> won't be able to, uh, I feel like it, would, it wouldn't be good uh, data. <laughs> no, that's not the reason. Or, <laughs> it's much bigger. It's against the law. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to go to jail. And I don't want to go to jail because if I tell you you could have ch children, I could go to jail for it. Yeah, you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's actually against the law. Um, in order to do a survey with children, it has to go with, through an official ethics committee first, which we don't even have one in our college. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you can't do it. Way too much work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're not doing that. Don't ask children. All right. The funny thing is, I've been doing this a long time. My daughter came home once, and she was she was in high school. She was 15 years old or something like that. Just somebody, even though I said it, they asked her. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. 
Yeah. No, no children allowed. All right. <laughs> that's, for, that's for legal reasons. Okay, so anyway, that's how you do it. And you just read what you need to read. So again, if you're doing dependent dis difference, so if you're doing dependent, that means you're asking everyone two questions, or it might mean that you're looking at, um, I don't know, clarity of, of, of North Shore versus South Shore, maybe nitrate concentrations of creeks in the North Shore versus creeks in the South Shore would be an example. You see that it doesn't have to be survey question of people, it could be data collection. Does that make sense? Yep. And if you did it on, if it was done on 31 different years, you could do that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And that would be dependent. And then you right. go ahead and notice some of the main things you want to look at are the T value. For dependent, you're almost certainly going to have um, zero right there. But you're going to have a T value. You're going to have a P value. You have to decide whether it's a two-tailed, right-tailed, or left-tailed. Okay, again, you have to move your eyeball to mm -hmm. the right one. And that depends on your study. Does that make sense? Yeah. So write down your H0 and H1 before you even collect data. Okay. You decide on a level of confidence. Here's a good question. When do you decide on a level of significance? When you, um, is it the confidence interval? No. No, nothing to do with confidence interval. Mm. So at what point of the study do you decide on a level of significance? That's really important, actually. Any ideas? Hmm. Not right now. <laughs> before you collect your data. All right. So as soon as you state your null and alternative hypothesis, before you even go out and do any research or questioning or whatever, you decide on your level of significance. How do you decide a level of significance? How do you decide if it should be 0.01 or 0.05 or 0.1? Because those are the standard three. And when, yeah, I'm, I'm just, uh, I can't think right now. Eh? Okay, so what you do is you look at the type one error and you look at the type two error. Yeah. And you see which is worse. If the type one error is worse, then you're going to have a level of significance that's low, like 0 0.01. If the type two error is worse, you're going to have a level of significance that's higher, like 0.1. If they're about the same, use 0.05. All right. Okay. So you, all this should be in the write-up of your paper. Does that make sense? Yeah. So before you even talk about your data, talk about your choice of alpha and why based on the type 1 and type 2 errors. All right. Okay. When do you decide on a level of confidence? Mm. Any ideas? Probably. You may not know, by the way. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, okay. I'm not knowing it. So let me explain. That's at the end. So All what right. you do is start with a 95% and see if that gives you a useful range, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And if it's super, super narrow, and you're okay to make it a little wider, go to 99%. All right. If it's so wide that it gives you no good information at all, then maybe go to 90%. All right. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's very easy because in the spreadsheet, you just type in 0.9, And then it makes the changes for you. That's nice. Okay. At least it was supposed to. <laughs> there it is. Now it changed. Do you see it changed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But if you do, actually not 0.9, it should be 90. Whoops. Because that is in percentages. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. That's why it changed so much. There we go. So if you do 90, there's a 90%. By the way, there were only like three data points there. So you're not going to have anything interesting with the data values I had. <laughs> okay. If you do 99, you can look at it and see, well, is that useful? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And you can look at 95 also. Remember, you'd rather do 99, but if it's not useful, then don't do 99. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, if you find out that, um, if you were saying looking at the 
mean difference in height of, I don't know, let's say um, college students, students that are in college versus people the same age who are not in college. And you said that that difference in height is somewhere between negative 10 feet and 15 feet. Is that useful? No. Not at all. Does that make sense? Yeah. So don't use a 99%. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He's lower. Does that make total sense? Mm -hmm. So that's how you decide. Okay. Right. Whereas if it was like a difference between a half an inch and uh, let's say it was a difference between two inches and 2.1 inches, that's useful. You see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Standard error is really important. Do you remember what that is, the standard error? Uh, uh, no, not right now. That's a standard deviation of the sampling distribution. All right. Okay, it tells you how likely your estimates are to be close to the population estimate, population means. It tells you how likely the sample mean difference is to be to the population mean difference. You want to be very likely. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if your standard error is big, then you're likely to be pretty far away from the population mean, which means you have very useless data. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. If your standard error is small, that means you're likely to have your population difference to be close to the sample difference. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want. See that? Yeah, that makes sense for sure. Okay, so talk about the usefulness of the standard error. Also, if you rejected the null hypothesis, you're happy, right? Mm -hmm. so that's what you're hoping for. That means you showed what you wanted to show. Yeah. And that means you're satisfied, at least in that respect, with the standard error. Because the standard error is what drives that rejection. If your confidence level, or your confidence interval is useful, then you're satisfied with the standard error. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. If you're confidence level is useless, then you're unsatisfied with the standard error. Because the standard error helps you with the width of that confidence interval. A big standard error, you're gonna have a very wide interval. Small standard error, you're gonna have a very narrow interval. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I want you to comment. You should have a whole paragraph just on the standard error. All right. Okay. Take that note. So that's really, really important. Let me go back to the requirements now that I've shown you the spreadsheet and kind of how you read it. Do you agree that's pretty easy to see? Yeah, yeah, uh, it, it for sure is. And by the way, um, I do want to see a copy of either the whole spreadsheet, but at least the, the columns that you're using, either this dependent difference or independent. I want to see a copy of that. And if you don't know how to copy, you can always do a screen capture. Okay, either by the print screen or with a like a um, a uh, sticky notes. It's not sticky notes. What is it? It's uh, sorry. It's called snipping tool. That's in Microsoft at least. Apple has something like it too. Yeah, Apple has like a little. You can just you know select a portion of the yeah screen. Right. So you need to do that and paste it into your um, into your project. Okay because you have to prove that you use a spreadsheet. You're not allowed to use a calculator. But do you agree the spreadsheet's easier? Yeah, it has everything for you. You know, you just type in. Yeah, you may not realize, but the spreadsheet that I made does everything. So for example, um, if you go to compute, it will do normal distribution, remember that binomial? Wow. Yeah, so it does all this stuff. Okay, and data lists. That's the um, stats that we just showed in the calculator, two variable confidence interval p-value, two prop confidence interval and p-value. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I made it so it does everything, but the main thing for the project, you need this, this one right here. Okay, any questions so far? It's all making sense for sure. Okay, so um, similar rules to the last one, it needs to be typed obviously. Um, you should work together. Uh, don't use the word we or us. 
because it's not about you. It should be about the project. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So avoid those words. I would actually do a, uh, uh, you know, control F to find the word we and make sure you didn't have it in there. Does that make sense? Okay. So again, the main thing is confidence interval and hypothesis test. One thing is in your write up, don't make it look like a homework problem. That's not long enough. Does that make sense? It's not in depth enough. So don't just say that if, if we did another study of, you know, 35 people asking them both questions, and if the mean was the same, then there would be a 0.03% point or point, uh, say a 3% chance of getting a difference of this much, because that's not enough. Does that make sense? Yeah. Instead, talk about why you care. And again, if you've identified a client, it's a lot easier because you can talk about why the client would care. Okay. What is what decisions for every single thing you do? What decisions will the client make after looking at that confidence interval? After looking at the hypothesis test, what decisions will the client make? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a big piece of the project, just like the last one. But now it's for confidence interval and hypothesis test. Okay. Um, another thing is, are you satisfied with the p-value or not? Okay. And my recommendation is the p-value is, if it's lower than your level of significance, you should always be satisfied. If it's very high, you should also be satisfied because that means you're satisfied that it's time to give up. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If it's 0 0.06, for example, and you're using 0 0.05 as a level of significance, you should be unsatisfied. Yeah. Because that means that you still think you're right, you don't have evidence to show it, and now you have to decide, do you want to really beef up that sample size so that you can use a lot of large numbers? Okay, or you know, do you not have time for that? But do you see what I mean? You should be very unsatisfied. Yeah. Because you just, it, you want either a very high p-value or a very low p-value because that kind of reveals truth. And you always want to reveal truth. You never want a borderline on the high side. Okay. I'm going to let you read through all the words here. But I've kind of talked about all this stuff that you have to have. But again, remember, it is all about the confidence interval and the hypothesis test. You should be having the words mean, population, mean, difference many times in the paper. I would recommend just writing those, two, those, those words down, those three words down. It's going to appear probably over a dozen times, those three words. Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. the whole paper is about the population mean difference. Any questions at all about the project? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> and just like before, um, if you submit it to me on t early, then I'll take a look at it. What's wrong with submitting, say, the Thursday before the project is due? Why am I not going to look at it? You, know, you don't really have enough time, right? But what am I going to be doing? Oh, you'll be at <laughs> Thanksgiving. I'm going to be eating turkey, <laughs> okay? <laughs> So don't wait until Thanksgiving weekend to give it to me, hoping I'll look at it, because I'm going to be with my family. Yeah, and that's what it. people are supposed to do on Thanksgiving. <laughs> I don't know if you can be with your family too, but that's a, you know, that's a good thing to do. I will. <laughs> so I'm going to be out of town with my family, and I don't want to be reading projects while I'm eating turkey. <laughs> yeah, no way. Yeah, so do it way ahead of time. That's why I'm talking now instead of, you know, even though you got weeks before it's due, but you really want to try and get it due like the Wednesday, have it finished by the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, maybe even the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, which means get it to me a week before it's due. Right. Right. Okay. A week or maybe even nine days before it's due. So you have plenty of time. You have all the information you need to know. Okay. I want to give you a secret word. Let me go. I have to share so I can type the secret word. Okay, so the secret word.
is two because this chapter 10 is all about two samples, right? Two yeah. populations or two survey questions. So it's a nice, easy secret word. So if you have any questions, um, the good thing about just being you is that you've been asking all your questions, but I can answer some more if you have them. I think I'm all right right now. Okay, then we'll say good night. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. And thanks for saving the day for everyone so we got it you know, recorded. <laughs> we'll need to record tomorrow. So hopefully we'll get some more people tomorrow. All right, thank you. All right, take care. And for all of you watching this as an archived YouTube video, um, thanks. Please post on the project discussion forum if you have any questions about the project or if you want to talk to me about your idea for the project. And please post on the Q&A forum if you have questions about anything, any topics and statistics. And I'll be happy to answer. Um, have a good night. <laughs>